Time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Linda Boss McClellan. And this is It's Movie Time. It's Movie Time. And Linda, it's time to take a trip. Let's go to Spain. <laughs> yeah, let's go to Spain. Let's go to Spain. Well, if we can't, maybe we should review the film. Okay. The trip to Spain. This was a treat for me because I'd never, I had not seen the first two. Okay. And so it's like a fictionalized documentary. Um, <laughs> it's you know going on supposedly in real time, but um, there's a lot of stuff going on. But uh, it, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Well, it stars Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon, mm -hmm. two buddies uh, who are both. Uh, actors. But they're friendly rivals. There's a lot of rivalry going on there. <laughs> you I know, think. that is one of the things I really like. There's tension there. Yep. And they'll call each other on their faults. Right. <laughs> and yet, they'll still come back to having a great time. Right. Uh, but it was just, it was so beautiful. It was along the scenic coastline of Spain, staying in these beautiful hotels and um, eating at these very trendy restaurants. <laughs> uh, we get to see snippets of the food preparation. Uh, in the sautéing of scallops. And yes, I love the those. The shrimp cooked in delicious sauces, and then the way the the oh. food was presented oh. on the <laughs> such artistic flair, yeah. these beautiful dishes. I love these restaurants, and sometimes you get the name of the restaurant right there, or you yeah. have to wait for the credits to get it. Right. But of the half dozen or so, they're all uh, so uh, uh, simple in a sense. Right, but very they're trendy. Very yes. Trendy. Oh, you can just tell, and. In previous iterations, the first one was the trip, the second one was the trip to Italy. Oh, wow. Um, I think you had more of a description coming from the uh, sommelier or the, uh, in this case, from the, the maitre d'. Oh, what the food was. Yeah, what exactly yeah. it was. This one seems to have less of an emphasis on food. <laughs> and more on conversation. And more on conversation. And what I like, and check me if I'm wrong, a more of a development of a kind of an emotional uh, business going on between the two and with each other. They right, had more definitely. emphasis on them. Uh, there was a, a recurring theme throughout the movie about aging, I thought. Uh, wonderful. Yeah. And um, at one time they were driving down the road and they're both singing the windmills of my mind. I know. And that song <laughs> kind of reoccurs throughout the film. Yeah. And I think at one point one of them says, we're like ripe fruit and it's time for taking stock. So I think that was something that was going on too. They're both in their 50s, and they both have very different lives. Um, yeah, I think at one point Coogan says he's at the top of his game. Well, but I think he he has a huge ego. Number one, huge ego. <laughs> he's great. He's but I think he's, he is aware that he's at the end of the line as far as his leading man status. And he keeps reminding us about his, I think it's two Academy Award nominations. and uh, uh, That's for us, Philomena. <laughs> yeah, and he won't let us forget the Judy Dench movie <laughs> at all. Um, but during the course of the film, he gets disturbing news that his 20-year-old son has gotten a 19-year-old girl pregnant. And then he gets a call from his agent who is dropping him. Yeah, they've made a switch at the agency. Right. <clears throat> and... Uh, he's uh, he's as you as you noted for Philomena he had two uh, Oscar nominations including best writer right so that this he's you know, and he's done quite a bit of writing mm -hmm. besides that is Coogan has right. uh, besides Coogan. his many television appearances and, and being uh, leading in Tristram Shandy and in uh, the uh, Judy Dench film Philomena so it's uh, yeah, it's he's he's not a piker, but he is the way he plays himself in this movie seems to me to be um, uh, egocentric, right? But with I believe the twist that you're mentioning is a growing sense of his aging right. and becoming mm -hmm. outmoded. Well, and then he gets the news that they want to use a writer to polish up his, oh, the, uh, the writing of the right. script for missing, I believe, and right. he doesn't take kindly to that at all. So. All right, now, Linny, <clears throat> yes, you right. and I chuckled. What would we possibly be chuckling at? <laughs> 
Well, of course, all of their impersonations. I mean, they do uh, Marlon Brando and Michael Caine, Richard Burton, Robert De Niro, and, ma and many, oh, many they others. Do. Yeah, I mean, their most famous one, and particularly the previous two, was Michael Caine. Right. And they're still on top. Oh, and they are right on target. But my favorite one was when they were doing the late David Bowie. And they nail his vibrato, <laughs> and they're singing this song with the mannerisms and everything. And they've got it perfect. They just had it perfect. For me, when they hit such British uh, icons as yeah. Ian McKellen and John Hurt, yes, uh, yes. when they do those with the raising their heads and pursing oh, their lips. I know. There's so much body language <laughs> oh, going on. Is, but they are great, and they are spot on. Even Woody Allen. Yep. <laughs> and and one that I particularly liked, Anthony Hopkins. Oh yes, there wasn't enough of Anthony for me. I think they could have done more of Anthony. Well, I know they did. So we see in this film a maturation of the trilogy, and they're all directed by Michael Winterbottom, right. who, who did uh, direct uh, Coogan in Tristram Shandy, and who did uh, a fine film called Welcome to Sarajevo. Uh, so uh, Winterbottom's a veteran, but particularly a veteran of this series. Um, and uh, there are other characters, are they not in this story? Is it just these two guys? Uh, well, there's two women that come in to do a, a film shoot of <laughs> of them uh, playing Don Quixote and his sidekick. S Sancho Panza. Out in the wilds <laughs> yeah. of Spain, the mountainous area, which is gorgeous. Uh, so that was a bit strange. They dress up as Quixote and Panza. Right. It's really kind of a hoot. Very but it, cool. it's mostly just the two of them uh, hanging out and talking, and it's it's wonderful to think, oh, if I was there, you know, wouldn't that be fun? Uh, and I can easily see you hanging out with these two guys. Oh, well, me oh, and Johnny and, DiLoretto. Well, no, you would hold your own. Well, but Johnny would do the impressions. Oh, that's would, right, that's <laughs> right. I could definitely see It would be great. That. Yeah. Um, they... You can make the analogy uh, with this, uh, the two guys on the road with Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. Oh, yes, yeah. And and uh, some would say that Coogan is the Crosby type, mm -hmm. which is a little more right. centered, right. a little more critical. Yes. And uh, that uh, Bryden <clears throat> would be the Bob Hope kind right. of joker. Uh, Ro right. um, Rob Bryden seems to be the more well-adjusted of the two. Uh, he is in a seemingly happy marriage with two small children. As an older gent with yes, young kids. exactly, exactly. So it's a nice juxtaposition with that and Coogan's fishing around for love. Right. Including oh. his 19-year-old chick. Yeah, and he gets on a, the phone with her and she is <laughs> dropping him as well because she's going back to her husband. Uh, and they're just like thin little plot lines. Oh, they are. Now, Lenny, I'm not sure how much of this is true. Yeah, right. Uh, whether, it, But because... There's a kind of seamless uh, characterization with these two. You tend to think that everything that they're saying about each other is true, and it's yeah. not necessarily. No, so. not really. I'm um, not sure Bryden ever met Mick Jagger, but he sure does do <laughs> yeah, that a was, great. Oh, that was so funny. He does that a really great was. impersonation of wonderful. Jagger. Jagger appreciating his Michael Caine. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, the only annoying thing in the movie for me okay. was Bryden's impersonation of Roger Moore. Okay. And they get into this discussion about the Spanish Moors, which leads to a mention of ISIS. But that, for me, that scene, his impersonation, impersonation of um, Roger Moore just went on way, 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 way <laughs> they, too long. They took it long, but oh. I loved every second of it. <laughs> and it sort of, it ties in, I think, to the ending uh, of the film, which uh, for me didn't work real well. It's like they didn't know how to wrap it up so they just tacked on a weird freeze frame at the end which i didn't like it is strange you have yeah. to think about it a little bit right but some of that last part is fantasy dream yes. vision right uh, and, and that, some of his dreams in the film are some right. of the bar best some of his dreams in the film are the best parts for me the most entertaining yes they are and and i think you've hit it right there is something very entertaining about two buddies on the road. There have oh, always been uh, mm -hmm. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, right. uh, Thelma and Louise. Think of the yeah. number of buddy films there are on the road. Yeah. And I think they hold up the tradition very well. Very entertaining. But there is an undercurrent of seriousness about oh, yes. it. I think as you yeah. opened up the discussion, uh, their recognition of their aging. And yet I think that they're uh, intellectually they're at the top of their game. Oh, they're I mean, outstanding. This is, here's something that, that I came to realize 
And you would think, why didn't I realize this right away? It's all improv. Mm -hmm. Right. At times, especially during the Roger Moore thing, I think they could have used a bit of a script. Because, like, for me, it really just went on too long. But, <laughs> I did, I But, know. yeah, it's all improv. I never get improv. I never get too much of that James Bond, oh, even yeah. the Sean Connery. They but nail the, it. They just the Roger nail Moore, it. they had so many puns right. on Moore's last <laughs> name. And it was, yes, you're right. And in fact, they probably, for some people, probably too many, <laughs> too many impressions. <laughs> yeah. right. and they could have done this up, but I just thoroughly enjoyed every one of those. I did too. Well, Linda Boss McClellan. Yes, the film John is, yeah, the, the film is The Trip to Spain. What grade would you award it? Um, I would definitely give it a B because it's so entertaining mm -hmm. and it's so different. It's just not your typical movie. It's, uh, it's just pure fun. And I'm going to award it an A- simply because I'm that simple-minded and because I remember so many trips with buddies uh, that were filled with, with not maybe not this level, but this kind of quick banter, deprecating and self-deprecating exactly. comments. And so it's got all of humanity in that little Range Rover. Right. Are you ready for a three-hour lunch? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wish. Oh, <laughs> Lord. And there, there may be a place in Columbus, Ohio that would put up with us for three hours okay. if we could cut to them throwing it on their pans, lighting the fire, right. and doing all that stuff. Or maybe they'd let us cook. <laughs> yes, that would be great. <laughs>